Go, going back to our roots, John. Yeah. We're going to go back to our roots. Yeah. We're going to do one of these things. We're going to do one of these, uh, hey, let, let me tell you about how to play Bloodborne for those of you. Can I, can I ask you something, Jeff? Okay, go for it. Um, can there be such a thing as too much Bloodborne on, a, on the website? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. So No, no, Ooh. no. When someone asks you that question, Jeff, you say no. You say There's no. There's never uh, too much. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to the Super Awesome Video Game Show. I am Jeff. And I'm John. Uh, and we're going to go ahead. We're going to skip over a lot of this story because we've got a lot of ground to cover here. And I'm going to go ahead. So, hey, before you get started, uh, most of this shit is just shit. The only thing that really uh, matters is your origin. Uh, which affects your starting stats, but I'm going to go with milk toast because it's a pretty even thing. It's pretty even. I, I tend to like violent pass because there's a higher strength. Mm -hmm. but yep. Kind of depends on how you're gonna how you're gonna spec. Yeah. Uh, now, um, let's see. We're gonna have a lot of this particular screen, so Ugh. I got to think of things to talk about while this screen is on. Um, so welcome person who has never played a Souls game to Bloodborne before. Yes. It's nice to have you here. Welcome, John, to Bloodborne, because uh, you haven't ever really gotten into the Souls games. No, I, I usually get about 30 minutes into them, and I'm just like, I'm bored. Yep. I, I, they're hard. I'm bored. Nothing is grabbing me. I am... I am... I am I'm kind of done with this. Like, okay. Literally, that, that's, that's, that, that's how my, my playings uh, have gone. Now, I will admit... Since our long playthrough of Dark Souls 2 yeah. uh, on Patreon, uh, I have kind of gotten a little bit more of an appreciation for them. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, this game has not had that effect on me. All right, well, so uh, for this particular game, I'm going to try to kind of combine the tips and tricks for people who might be stuck with basic gameplay functionality. So here at the very beginning of the game, you don't have a weapon. I'm going to go into that later. But what you do have is the circle button. If you hold it down, it makes you run. If you tap it, it makes you dodge. Uh, now, the very first lesson that everybody should learn about Bloodborne is you could totally run by shit and you don't have to fight it. In fact, that's kind of a tenet of this game more so than any other game. Yes. Also, opening doors, pulling levers and shit like that makes you, well, it makes you totally invincible. If he they just hit you when you're opening it, not like to, right after. Yeah, happened to catch me right when I was done. Uh, but most people die on this motherfucker. I've kind of gotten tired of doing that, so now I just run because fuck it. Um, I've made it a goal at, at some point to actually just to kill it. Like, uh, somebody messaged me on the website and said that they did that, and then it, it just went through, and then they got to this guy, and then he killed them. Yeah. Wow, that motherfucker followed me all the way back up here. Yeah, all he right, did. Uh, get on this ladder. But he can't I, climb ladders, he so... He can't climb ladders. I can't be hit on ladders. He can climb the ladder. Oh, uh, well, that's not good. So we're going to just run from here directly over and get back to the hunter's dream. So basically, uh, these things right here, I don't know, these little lampposts, um, are your checkpoints. Um, and they let you teleport. That Basically, when you die, you come back at these. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Yeah. Unlike in Dark Souls, uh, you can't actually rest at them and make all the enemies in the area respawn, which sucks. You also can't level up, repair, or do anything at them except for teleport back to the Hunter's Dream, which also sucks. Now, here's the Hunter's Dream. This is going to act as your hub world for basically the entire game. You've got a few different things in here. This doll, she will level you up in a, in a little while. Uh, these tombstones basically act as teleportations to, to the, the various areas post. of the game. Yeah, uh, all four of them. There's a fourth one up there that's all fucked up. Now, here at the very beginning, we're going to get a choice between what weapon we want to use. I'm just going to pick... Um, well, let's just take a second here. You can see... Um, at any one of these screens that has a bunch of numbers, if you don't know what's going on, you can always click in the R3 button and get uh, a description of what you're, what you're seeing here. Yeah. Now, for these first three weapons, the biggest thing that you're going to want to look at is down there where it says attribute bonus. Uh, that basically is going to tell you whether the um, attacking power of this particular weapon scales with strength, with skill, uh, with, I believe it is, and then the other two are... Um, what are they? Blood, Blood Tinge, and Arcane. Yeah. Uh, I always start off with the Saw Cleaver. I think it's a really easy base weapon. Then you got your firearms. I always start off with the Blunderbuss because it's got a real wide area of effect. Yeah, and, and there is a difference between those. Like, the Blunderbuss has a wide area of effect. However, it has a, a, a slower firing animation. Yes, uh, yes. But the, the pistol actually only shoots in a very straight line. So if you've got a, an enemy that's squirrely in any way, it's really hard to catch him with it. Uh, in here, we've got a few things, uh, none of which we're going to get to right now. This is your stash, 
where if you store, we'll get to that in a few minutes. This is your upgrade bench where you can upgrade your weapons, and this is where you assign uh, various runes that you won't get to until way later in the game. Uh, also, if you go out this little door, you've got these guys, which is a store that you can uh, buy things with using insight, and then you've got these guys, which are a store which you can buy stuff using just straight up. Blood Echoes. And what are Blood Echoes, John? They are the, the currency in which you can... But they're essentially, if you played a Dark Souls game, they're, they're souls. They're souls, yeah. Uh, so, uh, up in the upper right-hand corner, you've got a thing that is Blood Echoes. And if you've never played one of these games before, here's how it works. When you kill people, you get Blood Echoes. If you die, you drop your Blood Echoes on the ground. You have to run. You get go back to the nearest lamppost, and you have to run back to where you drop them. But if you die on the way, then you drop the souls, or the souls, the Blood Echoes that you're currently holding, um, and the ones that were on the ground go away. Yes. So, um, now that we've got weapons, we could take a couple seconds to go over how they work once the game starts back up again. I'm going to tell people right now, every single weapon in this game transforms. Yes. They're called trick weapons, and they transform from a basic to kind of a more advanced uh, uh, configuration. So, let's get our saw cleaver and our blunderbuss going. All right. R1 is your normal attack. R2 basically charges up, but one thing that I keep forgetting that you got to remember is if you tap R2, you still do a heavy attack. You don't have to charge that attack up for it to be useful. Uh, L1 switches between the two different functionalities of your trick weapon. Generally speaking, the transformed one tends to be more powerful than the smaller one. There's also has a little bit more range. Yeah, they're different for every single weapon, but in the beginning, that's kind of how it goes. L2 fires your gun, uh, which you do not use to shoot people. <laughs> well, you do, but you don't use it to really cause damage as much as you do one other thing that we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. Uh, now, when you're doing combos with your uh, with your weapon, it takes that stamina, the green bar in the upper right, left-hand corner down, um, uh, which you need to keep an eye on because that's going to govern your ability to roll. It's going to govern your ability to run. It's going to basically govern your ability to do everything. Yeah. Also, it, when you get all the way down, your your attacks are much slower. Yes. So it's it's always because you want to always have a, a good solid attack. So you always want to keep an eye on that to make sure that that green bar still got a lot left. Absolutely. Now, one thing that um, one thing that you can do uh, that may not immediately be apparent is when you are attacking with your normal weapon, you can hit R1, R1, and then you can hit L1, and you can basically swing. So here you get two regular attacks, and then it comes out. You can even come back in. So you can actually use that while you're attacking. Those attacks are more powerful than your normal um, your normal just swipe at them, but they do tend to take time. Like especially heavier weapons, it'll take a lot more time to pull that out. Yeah. Uh, now, one thing that I wish I'd known before I started was you've got up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got your blood vials, which you use with the triangle button to get health back, and you've got your quicksilver bullets, which is how you power your gun. Well, one thing I didn't come up to for a while is, th is basically if you hit up, on the D-pad, he's going to stab himself, and you're going to take off some health, but you're going to get five blood bullets, which are basically free bullets that don't take down that that uh, other meter. Yeah. Now, before I do this, I'm going to explain what's going to happen here. You're also going to see when I do that that when you take damage in the game, a portion of your health bar turns orange. That portion is basically, um, I, I forget what they call it, but it's, it's, it's if you hit somebody before that orange Part goes all the way back down to the red. You can get that health back, encouraging you to be aggressive. So what I'm going to do here, and this is something that is actually really useful, is I'm going to get myself the blood bullets, and then I'm going to get that health back by g coming up on this guy and attacking him. And you can see those little... Uh, got some of it back. Got some of it back. Got most of it back. Um, which is a very, very useful thing to do, because now I have five free bullets. Now, for this next part, I'm just going to run through these guys, because there's a lot of them. They don't really have anything that are very interesting, and go fuck yourself. Uh, also, there's a lot of them right here. There are a lot of them, and they will swarm you, and they will mess you up, uh, which is a real pain in the ass. Now, I'm going to... Um, I know that when we did our original Dark Souls video, yeah. I told people, like, don't try just running past everybody. But in this game, it's way easier. And because the, uh, because the areas are so spread out, it tends to be very... Uh, oh, oh, shit. shit. Yeah, One he followed, followed me you. all the way back here. They'll do that. So there's some blood. There's me getting blood back by using a blood vial. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Also, the other thing, the other reason why running around, running past a lot of stuff doesn't really uh, hurt anything is because in this area specifically, there's a lot of shortcuts everywhere. Oh, yeah. There's tons of shortcuts. So 
you if you want to go back and explore an area that you ran through, don't worry, plenty of opportunity to do that. Now we'll get. This is probably the single most important thing that people. You, I mean, you're not going to want to do it, but you got to do it. All right. So we've had our gun, and we haven't really used it for anything at the moment. Um, but the way that the gun works is if you can tag a person, not when they wind up, but as they're getting ready to hit you, they will go into this mode, and you can basically do a super heavy yeah. attack. A parry and repost, what you would think from, like, Dark Souls. That would be yeah. kind of what you're I, getting. I think the, the best way someone described it to me, and it actually made sense, mm -hmm. is you don't use the gun like a gun. You use it like a shield. Well, it's. I think it's more than just that because you can also interrupt people, like yeah. uh, people that are doing things. You can interrupt their. Uh, you can interrupt their animations with that attack. Yeah. Now, uh, as you saw on this particular screen, you can have two different arms and two different uh, two different sub weapons. Another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, if you're a veteran Dark Souls player who for any reason hasn't picked this up yet, there is no equip rate or encumbrance in this game. Yeah. You're always going to be doing your super fast rolls. You're always going to have kind of the same overall speed. Um, but So you might as well fill those slots up because you can use the left and right on the D-pad to switch between different things. Like this torch. Oh, my God, this torch is so useful, John. Yeah. Light, light and darkness actually really mean a lot in this game. And that torch is very useful for seeing in dark places if you know that you're just going to be primarily using your melee weapon and not uh, uh, not your gun for a whole lot. God damn it, dog. Stop uh, dodging. Um, so <clears throat> while we get around these guys, let me think of the – there was a thing I was just thinking of. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys generally don't tend to follow you forever. They So it's useful, if you know the area, it's useful to just keep running past them because at a certain point, they'll turn around. Yeah. There were a lot more enemies in Dark Souls that seemed like they would just follow you to the end of the goddamn world. Um, now, over the course of when we've been going through here, I've been picking up these bloodstone shards. Oh, no, don't sit down, dude. Come on, get up. Is it what I want to sit? I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh, there's a lot of these bloodstone shards that you pick up. Those are used for upgrading your weapons. And unlike Dark Souls, um, there's only one weapon upgrade path. You basically, your first three levels is one, two, three with these small bloodstone shards. Then you get double bloodstone shards that give you uh, through uh, five, six, and seven. And then, or uh, basically, there's three tiers the singles, doubles, and then chunks. Now, these guys are kind of a lesson in. Um, parry and repose because yeah. they are so easy if you do that as opposed to uh, just trying to attack them. Now, the other thing that's worth noting is that when you're locked onto a person, which you use R3 to put that little dot on them, so when I'm out here all by my lonesome and I hit the circle button, I roll in one direction. But when you're locked onto somebody and you do that, you kind of step towards them or step to the side, right? Um, very useful. Get out away from him. Uh, very useful for something that John was just talking about, which is when you're far away from somebody and you get him into there, you can hit that, run up on them, and then yeah. still be able to get the repost on them. Um, which for because you don't want to be standing right up in the grill of a lot of these guys. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Uh, come on, buddy. But that so. And that maneuver, the repost and the um, the parry and repost, is so goddamn useful that while you're in this opening area, you should totally learn how to do it. Yeah, it's it's also aside from just looking badass, it's 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 really really uh, well. You could do satisfying. It, you could do it on just about anybody in the entire yeah. game, uh, even even animals, right? It doesn't have to strictly be a humanoid like it did in Dark Souls. You could do it on werewolves. You could do it. We're gonna do it to a pig later. Uh, which sounded, that's a pretty dirty sentence that I just said, but whatever. Um, but the, the better you can get at doing it, the better you'll be at this game. And there are even some bosses. In fact, you're going to run into a lot of hunters that are basically just like you um, that have um, a shitload, that do that all the time, and you can totally get past them way easier if you know how to repost. Okay. Now, Do you want to tell them about this? What you just got here? We just picked up the full hunter set. You could buy this stuff back in the in the uh, 
Hunter's Dream, but it's way more useful to just come over here and pick it up because you basically got the same thing. You don't have to spend any blood echoes on it. Yeah, and it's it's really easy to get to. Like it's like he pointed, like you just saw, if you run by everything yeah. for the most part, and, and it's easy to get to. Absolutely. And then another thing that if you guys have never played a Souls game before that you should always do is every time you pick something up, you should read the description. Because this is where a lot of the lore of the entire world is going to be sitting right on this particular yes. screen. Um, and it, the same goes true for every time you pick up a throwing knife or you know thick cold blood or anything. Ha everything yeah. has a description. Everything has a, a description. I really like the pebbles description because mm -hmm. uh, it's just like they're really fun to throw at people. Yeah, <laughs> like that's all it says. Uh, which is funny to me. So if you follow along with what we're doing here, um, you're actually, by the time we get through this, going to be in a pretty decent uh, situation. I have not managed to die yet, and I don't have any wood to knock on, but uh, uh, this opening area, you're probably going to get to know really, really well. And like, I was reading this editorial, I think it was on like Polygon or something. Polygon has had a lot. Like, uh, If you thought we were talking about Dark Souls on Rage Select a lot. Bloodborne. Th or Bloodborne, sorry. Bloodborne. I mean, we do talk uh, about yeah. Dark Souls on yeah, Rage Select. If you thought we were talking about Bloodborne a lot here on Rage Select, we got nothing on Polygon. Yeah. But it was this guy that was saying, like, here's why I fucking hate Bloodborne. And he was complaining about, like, having to run back to the boss in this area. Um, this guy's a little bit more serious. Now, we're actually taking a lot less damage now because we've actually got something besides just fucking clothes, which is what we have yeah. for. Come on, bitch. Oh. 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 Nope. 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 Okay, let's not die. Let's not look like a chump in front of the people. Ah, shit. Got gotcha you a little bit. Yeah. Now, see, the other thing that you can do... Okay, I didn't manage to do it. The other vital attack move that you can do, like the parry and repost, is if you can get... And it, it's oh, so much harder in this game than it is yeah, in Dark Souls. Yeah, it is Souls. actually very hard. Uh, is if you get behind somebody fully charge an attack and hit them in the back, they will fall forward and you could do the same um, the same type of like super attack, vital attack on them. Um, also, keep an eye out for gates, for levers. If you come up to a gate and you can't open it, chances are there's a lever on the other side that's going to be a switchback. This particular one goes back to that area that had all the hunters and the dogs that we went through. Yeah. So like down there is where that first giant guy that we killed was. was. Banging on the door. Yeah. Uh, now, another thing that you should always be looking out for when you're playing through Bloodborne are lanterns, because that means that there's a person here that you can talk to. Everybody's inside because of the hunt, but this is where you're going to get a certain amount of story. And there's actually a few places where you can send people that are in these houses to sanctuaries that you'll unlock later. I'm not entirely sure how that works yet, but I'm going to recommend doing it as soon as humanly possible because um, those people can give you things. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm talking over this this little girl, but you guys can read it. Um, uh, you'll get things for sending them. As far as I can tell right now, there are two areas that you can send them to. Um, and you get different things depending on which area you send them to. Uh, but yeah, it's worth talking to people especially after you unlock the first sanctuary, which actually, if you warp back to that initial bonfire, uh, not bonfire, the uh, the initial Lamp. save point at Yosefka's clinic where we started, um, and then you turn around and you go up to the area that we originally came out of. Where you woke up. Where you woke up. Um, there's a woman there, Yosefka, who will unlock the first sanctuary. The second sanctuary is after um, the first area boss. So we're just about, we're, we're getting close to the end of our little path here. Um, and we're going to go back to our policy of just running by, guys. I'm actually not going to juice up just to make sure that I don't, uh, don't fuck this next part up. Yeah. Um, now, yeah, we're about to come up on a... Giant a pig man. Oh, nope, just pig pig. This pig has one of the most well-rendered pig anuses I've ever seen in a video game. Look, it's right there. Boom. And then and that is the backstab. Right oh, in there, get the in there, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, the pig is one of the only enemies in the game that I feel really comfortable doing that to, not in a sexual way, in a uh, skill way, because that that attack that he just did uh, makes him flump down, yeah. and so you can get him. Now we also picked up something called a saw hunter badge. You're gonna get a bunch of these over the course of the game. Basically, what this thing is is this opens up new things in the shop. 
back in the hunter's dream. Okay. So every time you pick something up and it comes into this key items category, or a lot of times, see at the bottom it says certain things can only be in, entrusted with a hunter in possession of this badge, or so they believe. So I believe that that particular badge is going to give you the opportunity when you go back to the hunter's dream to buy, um, to purchase all of the starting weapons and all of the starting uh, guns. Okay. So if you want to switch, like if you decided, if you pick the cane and you're like, ah, I hate the cane, you can pick that, you can switch that without too much difficulty. Now, we're coming up on a, a lot of this level from the opposite direction, folks. Uh, we're going all around the bend. In fact, this is kind of a, I'm kind of giving you guys the secret shortcut way of doing things in case you're having uh, difficulty with the game, um, kind of like our third video. Um so let's see some errata, I guess. The uh, your weapons do degrade over time. Oh, I didn't. I actually did not know that. Mm -hmm. You can repair them in the uh, Hunter's Dream, uh, and the more degraded that they are, the less effective they are. So it's a good thing to make sure that you've got them repaired up if you're going to be doing something serious. Um, we also just picked up something called uh, Madman's uh, Insight. Okay. Uh, which is it, below my number up there for. The uh, um, blood echoes. You can see that there is a zero. That is insight. Insight is basically it's a lot like humanity, but different. Uh, insight does a few different things. You can, when you have ten insight, you can spend it at that fountain that I showed you guys earlier in the hunter's dream. Um, but you also have to spend one insight every time you want to summon a person into your game. Yes. Now, unlike um, unlike Dark Souls, the only time that you can be... You can be invaded. I've never been invaded yet, right? But you can be invaded, The uh, but you only will be invaded after you've rung the bell to call other people to help you in your game. So as long as you're just playing like this, you can play online all day long, you're not going to get invaded. And if you notice, we've now made a whole circle back to where we started. Uh, we've got a fair amount of things. Let's go back and get ready and see if we can't get through uh, one of the first bosses. All right. Now, I will say it's interesting. Uh, we talked about the lo long hold times or mm -hmm. long uh, w load times on the, on, the, on the screen. Yes. It's actually interesting that when you go to the Hunter's Dream, the load time is actually about 20 seconds shorter than if you were to go into the main world. It's because it has so much less. Oh, yeah. God damn it. I forgot to do it yet again. All right. So, folks... Uh, normally in the game, um, this is a this is a thing for anybody that's having very a lot of difficulty. Uh, but it's kind of a tr it's a trick, but it's not really a trick that you really need. So the doll here, you can spend your blood echoes with her, and she will uh, she'll let you level up. But she won't come to life until you have at least one insight. Since we picked up that madman's knowledge, if we'd have used that before we came back here, she would now be standing up and would be willing to let us spend our blood echoes to level up. Yeah. Um, now, so now you've got to leave and come back. And yeah, if you leave and come back, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just because that takes too long. So what I'm going to do is because when we ran through, we got picked up uh, three bloodstones. I'm going to fortify the saw cleaver up to plus one. It takes, like I said, three for plus one, five for plus two, eight for plus three. All right. And then like those saw guys or anybody that you see that has red hair in the first level uh, will totally they will drop both blood and blood echoes. So it's useful to uh, to farm them. Uh, if you want to get your shit. I mean, you could get your shit up to, like, plus three before you try to beat this particular level. Um, now, let's see. I'm going to go with... A few of these. Now, you saw that it just said that I exceeded maximum and it put them into storage. See how the 20 and 20 are blue yeah. up there? Um, so you can only carry 20 bullets and 20 blood at a time. And when you... Uh, when you go over that, they get put into your storage container here. What's interesting about the storage container is that um, uh, when you die, it refills your blood and your bullets out of your storage container. So the more blood you have banked, the less you have to come back. You don't have to come back to get that blood refilled. Yeah. All that happens is if you have bonus blood then and you die, then it'll come back there. Yeah. And you'll actually see if I get any blood on my way to the cleric uh, 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 monster uh, that when it comes up there'll be a little yellow and a little yellow chevron with like a silver line in the middle of it and that is what indicates that it's being sent back to your stash yeah so sometimes you'll pick up three blood from like an enemy from an enemy that drops them and you'll see like one that goes into your inventory and then two that go back to your stash 
Now, um, we're going to go fight the Cleric Beast, which is the first uh, boss in the game. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, equip some Molotovs. Uh, how much time do we have, just out of curiosity? Oh, great. We're making wonderful time. Well, it also helps that you didn't die a lot. Yeah, well, that always helps. Um, so there I just popped my, uh, you know, popped my blood bullets and then got my got it back. Uh, certain enemies, it's, it's interesting. If you pay attention, you'll find, like, um, oh, you could see the little, little chevron on that when I picked it yeah. up. Uh, I'll try to do it again and see if I can't get it to actually happen this time um, and not just dismiss it. Uh, but certain enemies will drop certain things. So, like, these guys generally tend to drop blood or nothing, uh, pretty much. Um, but, like, any of the hunters that have a gun yes. will drop Quicksilver bullets. Yes. Uh, and they will drop them every, almost every single time that you uh, fight them. In fact, in my game that I'm playing through, like, this guy has a gun, and he's going to drop Quicksilver bullets, and there's the little the little stash icon. Yes. Um, it's like a tiny little <laughs> icon of the stash. Well, it's weird because it's silver and the stash is a brown box. Yeah, true. So I'm like, what? All right. So here's the uh, before we came up to this bridge. And this is just going to show you kind of how twisty and turny this game is. We came up to this bridge on the other side of these two werewolves. We actually came up over there, ran over it when we were running from those hunters, and then we ran down the other side. Um, but this those shortcut. Those werewolves are a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend. Werewolves are kind of a pain in the ass. Not even so much when there's one, but when there's two, oh, uh, go fuck yourself. Uh, so here we've got some land, oh, I like to call the land crows, and another one of these guys. I'm just going to run by them because past them is where the first boss is. So we're going to go. Whoot, and boss time. Now, this boss is very much kind of Taurus Demon esque, like from Demon Souls or from Dark Souls, where he's kind of intimidating initially but if you just kind of um, get used to him he's not really super difficult if you just kind of get behind him and you swipe at him try to stay under his legs try to stay out of the reach of his his big hand and his little hand back up when you need to pop some blood you can use molotovs with him i'm gonna try um they're actually really effective if you're having trouble with him i'm gonna try not to just because i want to save them in case we can get to the uh, Father Gaskion fight, um, but uh, Ooh. yeah, he's he's one of those bosses. He's one of those Souls bosses where if you just get kind of up in his grill, a lot of times um, he's a lot easier than if you don't. I know that I'm saying that as I'm getting hit a bunch of times. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, well, that's he... weird. Damn it, asshole. Now he's gonna hit me again before I can get off this thing. All right, here we go. There we go. Come on. It's funny, the, the, when I fought him before, when I was like, yeah, we'll do a tutorial and I'll totally fight the cleric demon, I had no problems whatsoever with him. So if you can kind of concentrate on his big arm, which is not, I mean, you know, his big arm is what hurts more than anything. Um, sometimes he will uh, fall down and you can get a vital attack in on him. Um, but as you kind of stay behind him, he's really not that big a deal. I mean, you can see he's not even really hitting me with these attacks. Yeah, no, it's he's he's more intimidating than anything else. Like he's more just like like almost everything in all of these types of games. They're more banking on the fact that you're going to be scared of him than um, than how actually difficult he is. And I feel like that's also a lesson they're trying to teach you by having him be kind of the first boss type character that you fight. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm not doing uh, what I should be doing here, which is you can hit him once and then hit him with your heavy attacks. Uh, I haven't really been using my heavy attacks at all on this fight. But if you... Oh, shit. Oop. Whoa. Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah, you might want to run away. Yeah. And pop some blood. Um. Oh. oh. Nope. Nope. Oh, 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 snap. Almost, <laughs> too. Yeah, that's pretty close. <laughs> now, if you're having a lot of trouble with him, you can, uh, once you've popped that insight, you can go back to buy the doll, and you can pick up 
uh, a bell, and I'll go back into this. You pick up a bell on a gun, right? If you have one insight, which you can see I've got two now. Oh, it takes me back here to specifically get the uh, beckoning bell, uh, which I'll, I'll use. I'll see if I can't bring somebody else in. And I'm actually... And she's awake. I'm out of... Yeah, so she will let you... Um, she will let you through this uh, basically upgrade. I don't have any blood echoes right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these things. Yes. You're going to pick these up through over the course of the game, and basically they will let you... Um, you can cash them in for blood, and the whole point is that the game can't take them away from you. So I'm actually going to use all of these because I'm not going so yeah, to come back to this So the character. idea is you don't want to use those until you're ready to start buying or spending them, essentially. Right. That way you don't lose them. Right. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put, okay, Beckoning Bell and Silencing Blank. So, again, to recap, because... and and. I don't know if there's, right now, I feel like there's a problem where in Dark Souls, because the way that the, the, way the level matching goes here, right? Okay, check this out. The way the level matching goes is it's your level uh, plus, t plus or minus 10 levels plus or minus, I believe, 10%. So if you're level one, you should be able to get, or uh, we're level 10 right now, right? Yeah. We should be able to bring in people from level one to level 20 plus 10%, which is one. So from level 21 all the way down to, I mean, there's level no such thing one. as level zero. Or you can even start the game at level one, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, level four or uh, four is yeah. the, the lowest you can start at? Four is the lowest you can start out at if With you really want to do skin? it. Yep. Where it allows you to kind of customize things a little bit more. Yep. If you well. really want to, I found the stats, because there are fewer of them, to be far less important in here than they were in, like, uh, Dark Souls, because there are fewer of them than yeah. there were in Dark Souls. Um, so, oh shit, god damn, Jeff. Um, so we're going to pop up here. Okay, so the way that it works is when you ring the bell, oh, there's also a couple of other things that are worth talking about. One, under network, right? This is set to local by default. I say set it to worldwide because you want to let get people in from wherever. You can change whether it shows your player name or your online ID. And then if you want to play with your friends, you can set a password here that you can give to your friends, and then it'll try to match you two up when you ring the bell, which oh, is pretty okay. cool. Uh, because that's one of been, been one of the biggest problems with this whole series from the beginning is, oh, but I want to play with my friends. It's like, well, no, you can't. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be people here doing this. They probably should be because it's, uh, it's cheap, easy souls. I'm going to have to kill these crows, though. Stupid land crows. Come on, dude. Come on, Jeff. God damn, dude. Come on, Jeff. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. These guys always drop blood, so I don't have any real problem with. And so what's interesting is actually um, if you if you pay attention, these, these guys, like the hunters that are out, yeah, uh, they almost always will drop blood. And any of these guys, you'll find those big dudes throughout the entire game, they almost always drop blood. It's very, very important to know what they drop because then it's like, well, you can use some blood and get hit and not have to worry about wasting it because you can pick it back up from those guys. Yeah. All right, so uh, the silencing blank basically stops searching from happening. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring this beckoning bell. It's going to consume one insight immediately. Uh, so later on, when you get ten, when you get ten insight, you can buy the small resonant bell from that little fountain, and that's what lets you help other people out. Um, but well, all you do to do that is you ring that bell in an area, and then it'll match you up with anybody who's, who's looking. rung the the beckoning bell. Now you can hit the silencing blank, and that's going to stop that from happening. Um, I don't know if this is going to happen because there's been a lot of problems with the with the co-op recently. I'm going to give it a, just a couple of minutes, and then uh, if that doesn't work, then we'll just go in there and kick his ass ourselves. But um, I don't think I like this system as okay. much. Because in Dark Souls, you knew that there were people there to yeah, help cause you. because they, they left uh, a mark. Because the signs on the ground, right? Yeah. And in fact, uh, speaking of signs, you can, um, well, let's see. First of all, the touchpad lets you do all of your gestures uh, like you've done before. And then you also have um, this thing, which I don't know what, what this does. Personal effects? The pebble? Oh, this is just a way to switch between. Yeah. 
Uh, you could just use these things. Okay, cool. I wonder how different that is from the actual little sub option thing. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get in here and get started. If somebody comes in, they can actually join me while I'm in the boss fight. It's happened to me before. Uh, so I'm going to try this yet again. Now, if you use the silencing thing, does it give you your insight back? Or is I it gone? don't believe so. I think that your insight, that's one of the complaints that people currently have is that using the insight is a, is a one-way street. Oh, no. Okay, see? It's a little X by the bell now. Uh, that means that I'm no longer bringing people. That's weird, because when I fought Father Gaskion, um, I was able to summon people. Oh, did you do it? No, you just pissed off now. Okay, I'm going to go get my blood echoes back. I really wish that it didn't do this in the oh, middle of the, boss fights. The dimming, the... Yep. Oh! Yep. Another thing that is worth... Um, worth talking to people about and there's a there's some controversy not controversy but in dark souls there were people who definitely would advocate oh shit yeah you made it you back off a little um bit. would advocate don't lock on and ah oh, shitty god damn man i am not having a good day today all right let's try this again you can do it jeff come on uh and for a lot of the bosses in this game not locking on is actually a good strategy because it uh um, if there are big bosses like this, a lot of times locking on just does nothing but get, like make your camera freak out and become difficult to... Ah, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! I've never gotten grabbed by him before we did, did this video. Yeah. All right, you know what? I'm going to Molotov the shit out of him. Oh, fuck. Molotov him! Eat fire, bitch! I'm not going to do it for everything, but... Well, yeah. There we go. I wish I could get him to drop down to his knees. Again. Yeah. Not like that. Oh, shit. There's got there's I think if you focus on his his one big jerk off arm that uh, uh, yeah. that will make him drop down to his knees faster. Shit. I think you got this. I mean, don't get too cocky, obviously, but... Yeah, I'm going to use Molotov. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, there you go. So that's the Cleric Beast. Uh, again, I found that just like in uh, a lot... Uh, like a, a very much in like... Um, oh, the, okay, the Sword, Hunter, sword badge. Hunter badge might actually be the one that gives you all the stuff. <coughs> but like a lot of, like a lot of Dark Souls, again... I a lot of times have trouble facing bosses the first two or three times I face them, and then by the fourth time when I'm just like, yeah, fuck you guys, whatever. It's not a big deal anymore. Um, now, so that's the first boss of this area. The second boss of this area is actually right around the corner, and we're going to go fight him right now. Uh, we're going to try to use the giants on the way there to get our uh, blood back, and... Uh, and then go from there. Now, another thing to uh, to just note, and we haven't been really doing this, but you know how people will write things on the ground, right? Yeah. Um, in this game, there's actually a lot of shit that's written on the ground by the that's story. It's like notes from the storyline, essentially. So it's definitely worth it to pay a clo pretty close attention. And if you see those, if you see notes, read them. Um, because Especially if you want to know more about the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. The story is very uh, fairly inscrutable, um, or at least it is to me right now. I don't know. Maybe once I get done, I'll have a, a, a better idea of what it's all about. <coughs> but you see, okay, so back to insight. You get one insight for seeing a boss, which is a kind of a cool system because it means you'll at least get one summon uh, if you see yeah. the boss, right? Um, now, I don't know if you know this, John, but bridges in Dark Souls... In Souls games, not a good place to hang out. Oh, never, because stuff like that happens. No big dragon this time, just a big ass boulder. All right, so I mean, we didn't we see the see what was pushed down that boulder earlier? Yeah, we came around this side. Yeah. Remember, we we came up from the back before. Um, all right, and let's go ahead and oh shit, no, fuck off. Nope. 
Nope. God damn. All right. I was really trying to be clever here, but it's not working for me. I really need to just parry this guy. There, there you go. go. And then I love these guys because this is... Oh, hey, cool. I'm still summoning. Oh, rad. All right, cool. We're going to get a, a person in our game. Okay. Um, so when you... when you uh, where, did, where are they coming from? Ta Takuya Taki uh, 0221 Zeno. Now, these people, uh, when they come into your game, they come in from wherever they're standing, which means this guy's probably standing up by the boss. Yeah, there he is. Um, all right. You ready, bro? ready, bro? Oh, he's totally dressed like Gaskion as well. He's dressed like the boss that we're getting ready to fight. Nice. Uh, let's give him a nice little uh, little hunter salutation. Hello, sir. And let's go fight this guy. And he fights. <coughs> this guy fights an awful lot like you, and it sucks because he's got a shotgun and oh, it yeah. hurts your face. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over this. He's just chopping some shit up. And then he turns around and he's like, grr. So we're going to... Oh, can I not skip it? Oh, there we go. There you go. All right. So this, Father Gaskion. This particular area... Um, now, the thing to note about this guy is that you could totally, like you just saw, you could totally stun him and then, uh, and then parry him, right? He's not immune to uh, the same things that you are if you can catch him in the right place. He also is, like I said, not afraid to see. There he goes. And then we go, Ugh. Now, uh, that music box that we picked up earlier from the little girl, we could totally use that with this guy, and it'll kind of stun him. Um, but the, ooh, 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 yeah. Back Do it. Back uh, him. Uh, God, I love playing with other people. I wish I could get more. So at a, at a third down of his health, he's going to transform his axe into uh, the big axe. Um, oh, yeah, man, I'm on a backstab roll with this motherfucker. Oh, he's got the Kirk hammer. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, now, in this particular area, when he when you're fighting just him, it's very useful to use the... Uh, he can't shoot through the, uh, uh, the gravestones, so it's useful to use them as cover when you know that he's going to fight. It's also yeah. trying to teach you how to make sure that you side dodge yeah, uh, apparently there's also a glitch or something on one of the characters. I don't know if it's this boss or whatever that I heard about with one of them where you can just get behind the gravestones and just... Oh, shit. He's getting ready to die. Dude, use some blood. Uh, now, see, one of the things that he might not be using his blood is because, unlike uh, Dark Souls, you don't get your blood back when you beat the boss. Uh, like, if you use up four blood vials beating this... Oh, shitty! Run, run, G, run. Um, if you use up four blood vials beating this guy, then when you go back to your world, you're just down four blood vials. So I'm just going to hit hit this guy with uh, Molotovs, which uh, is kind of a cheap way, but totally will work. Um, I mean, we pick those up, and there he goes. Yes. Boosh, done. So that's the first two bosses. I highly recommend. Uh, let me give this guy a, a little wave real fast. Bye. See ya, thank you. Um, He's like, yeah, we kicked its ass. Give me a timer. Give me a t give me a time check here, real fast, John. Okay, good. We're 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 kind of within a uh, reasonable limit, so I'm gonna just do one more quick thing, real fast. And there's where the lamplight, the second lamplight is. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you look around in the world, you're gonna see. Um, you remember that little girl wanted us yes. to find her mom. Wanted us to find her mom's brooch. That's her mom right there. <sighs> so in this, uh, uh, we've got this red jewel brooch now, and you can either take this back to, um, you can either take this back to that little girl and give it to her, or you can break it and make an upgrade gem, because all of the weapons in the game can be slotted with a number of gems, and that's the last thing to go over before. Uh, two more things to go over real briefly before we stop. One, when we go back after this part right here, when we go back to the hunter's uh, uh, dream, we're going to have a, uh, a, we're just about right now to pick up an object that lets us slot gems inside of our weapons. And depending on whether they're level three, level six, or level nine, I guess, or level eight, I guess, yeah, you can slot one, two, or three gems into them. And the gems modify them and make them do different, I mean, they'll add, like, attack bonuses, or they'll add, like, poison damage, or they'll add 
uh, like they'll make one of the specific types of attacks more powerful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, down the line, um, you can change those gems at will. So you don't, you can. It's not like dark. None of the upgrades in here is like Demon Souls, where you have to make a decision about using an upgrade okay. material. Like there's one upgrade path that all uses the same things, and then if you want to switch those gems out, you totally can. After you get a little bit further forward here, you're also going to get a thing called runes. Actually, no, you're going to have to go three more hours beyond this to get to runes. But runes are basically like rings. You can equip up to three of them, or I can equip three of them currently. Um, and they basically do things like give you a little bit of defensive bonus, or like some of them, if you do a vital attack, it'll give you back health, or they'll give you more blood echoes when you kill people. So they're very important, and you get those a little bit further down the line. The cathedral um, Ward. Yep. In the Cathedral Ward, here's the other person very sorry. Uh, that you can send people to. So when you talk to people, you can send them to either the Odeon Chapel or to um, Yosefka's, uh, Yosefka's Clinic. Uh, and it seems like it, more religious people like to come to here and sick people like to go to Yosefka's Clinic. Uh, one last thing before we leave. Uh, it's a little bit further down into the game before you get access to this, but I was like, magic? There's no magic in this game. Well, you're eventually going to get some items that go into these slots that you can use to essentially add magical buffs to your weaponry um, that all scale with um, uh, your arcane stat, right? Okay. Yeah. And you're also going to get gems later that you can slot into weapons that change the damage type of the weapons entirely from physical to fire or lightning, because those are the only two real things here, yeah. right? So here's the thing. It's going to be a little bit tougher going in the beginning if you want to do like a sorcery build, essentially. Uh, but if you uh, if you work at it, you can totally get it. And um, uh, it it, it, it becomes an option eventually that's probably more powerful than the shit that I'm using as a straight strength build right yeah. now. Uh, one last thing before we leave. The shop here is going to sell you a thing. I forget what it's called. It's like a little token. It looks like a little handkerchief Okay. Um, for 10,000 uh, uh, bloods, essentially, that unlocks one of the areas. Uh, this, the Hunter Chief emblem. You want to buy this. You totally want to buy this. If you the, like, you will find yourself trapped uh, in a certain area unless you buy. Or you, or you find yourself just out of places to go unless you eventually buy that. Um, and with that, I think we're done, John. All right. So that's uh, basically. Hey, how do you want to beat the first two bosses? We got. I mean, there's stuff to talk about with Chalice Dungeons. Uh, I'm going to give people a little tip right now. If you're having a lot of trouble with a place, try changing your clothes. People might react to you differently if you're dressed a specific way. Uh, and with that, we're going to be done, and I'm going to hit this stall real fast before I leave just to see what happens. Oh, she's Bishop from Android. Oh, dude, you can still channel blood echoes on her dead corpse? That's macabre. All right, folks, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week here on the Super Awesome Video Game Show. Bye.